you went over and above, I mean, A++. I would recommend <laughs> you to anybody over and above. And, and you take what you do seriously. I appreciate that. Do not drink it. You are sleeping. Wake up, I shouted. Only five people awoke. I shouted at the few that awoke. Wake the others, wake the others, wake up, you are asleep. Hallelujah is the only way to wake them up. Shout, hallelujah, shout, hallelujah. It was silent. No one said a word. They were so afraid of Ella that the ones that woke up did not speak a word. I left Ella's body on the floor because I decided I was going over to her spirit to fight her, and this time I intended to hurt her. Melinda, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, Graham. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Oh, you know, it's, it's a, a pleasure. I mean, we worked on this book together, and as is usual when I do this, this is the first time we've spoken or seen each other. So it's lovely right. to meet you, even though I've been inside your head for a number of weeks. Um, you know, I'm talking to you as if I, I know you for a long time. I was like, oh, this is my friend. <laughs> but we correspond awesome. backwards. And f for anyone who doesn't know how it works when you do an audio book, I mean, you can be, you, you know, you do whatever you like, but it seems to work if we just correspond in writing and then you can say, this 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 needs changing you know, or this is good or whatever and and it's it kind of works out doesn't it um it does yeah. it does and where are you i'm currently in raleigh north carolina the us of a <laughs> right i had some friends that lived in i think it was north carolina i hope i've got it right it's such a big country they were their names were gene and julie and they hosted the breakfast show or the morning show on a station i'm sure i want to say it was called light it had a name something like light anyway oh, and they yeah. they lived there for, for a little while yeah and they were really good friends of mine they were a married couple but they did a radio show together and oh. fraught with danger but they did it gene and julie and i'm sure they were in north rally north carolina I'm sure they were so how long have you been there i've actually been here 10 years you know, it went by so fast. I'm from original. I am originally from Jamaica, but yeah. I moved here in 2012, and time seemed to flew by. So tell me, why did you move from Jamaica to North Carolina? Actually, I met my husband, and he's from here. So I visited right. the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah, like my my wife is from new zealand and i met julie in new zealand and now she lives in britain <laughs> i mean i was i was living in new zealand at the time and uh, we got married and lived in new zealand for first three years of our marriage and then uh, then we moved to australia for a few years and then but that'll that'll do it you get married to someone and that's it then you off you go go on your yeah. trip do you miss jamaica i actually visit regular actually i think two weeks ago i was in jamaica a couple Were weeks you? Ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago I was in Jamaica. Then what was the transition like when you moved from, from the Caribbean to to North Carolina, to the South? It was difficult because of the culture and just missing family and friends and the newness, everything, the atmosphere, the weather, everything was different. But no, I've gotten so used to North Carolina. I mean, I consider here my home. When I visit Jamaica, I'm ready to come back. Do you believe that? You are. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, obviously, uh, from the title of the book, people will realize that your faith is very important to you. Did you <laughs> find it difficult to to find like-minded people when you moved to North Carolina from Jamaica that were of a similar a similar faith to you? Actually, I've met some people at work when I started my work. A few people, but. I consider my trip here at North Carolina as my, when Moses had to leave Egypt and he was in the <laughs> wilderness and he had to go to a foreign country where he was like basically alone with his wife and their family. That's all I felt for a long time. So it's a similar story, I, except that you weren't eating grasshoppers for a while. <laughs> or right, or <laughs> 
But yeah, that's how I felt. Wow. As I was in the wilderness, I was like, God, why you took me away, put me so far from everybody? But you know, it was his, as a pruning, I, I consider it my pruning, part of my pruning. And how far is it? How, how, how what's what's the flight time to, to Jamaica? So if you want to go home, because for Julie, it's like thirty hours to go to New Zealand from London. So what what's the flight time between North Carolina and the Caribbean? It's probably not that far, is it? A few hours? Not very far. It's like four hours if you had one plane. If you had one flight. Yeah. But you know, unfortunately, I have I have to take two planes, and there's always like hours and hours of layover. Because once I get to Miami or Florida or wherever, the first flight, you know, uh, departs to, I have to take something else from there to Jamaica. I see. So you, you can't fly direct from Raleigh to Jamaica? No, but if you live in Charlotte, you can go to Montego Bay. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Right. And do you live near, are your family near Montego Bay? No, they don't. It's like <laughs> so even then there's a road trip involved as well. It's at least two and a half hours at minimum. Wow. Wow. I've yeah. not been I've not been to Jamaica. I've been to to Cuba, which would have similar weather but a totally different culture. And yes. uh, Yeah, it, it was difficult because I was going to a radio convention in Los Angeles. And I wanted to stop in Cuba on the way, but you can't really do that because, or you might be able to now, but you never used to be able to. And I had to go in through Mexico. It was a very um, convoluted way to get in and back out. I had to come back through Mexico. You couldn't fly direct. I think if you've, if you're Cuban and you've got family in the U.S., there are direct flights into like LaGuardia and probably Miami, but you couldn't do it through LAX. You couldn't do it that way. Yeah. So what do you miss yeah. most about Jamaica then? Actually, I miss uh, the food. Right. Right. I miss the food. Yeah. Um, access to like real fresh fruits. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I do miss that a lot. But the and, food and in the south of the USA is pretty good, isn't it? I've been to Mississippi and I've been to Louisiana. And uh, I've been been all around that. I, I drove from Memphis to New Orleans uh, once. Yeah, so I've been. It's pretty good, but nothing beats like getting a fruit from the tree and eating it right away. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Like that, fruit. yeah. Picking your stuff and just yeah. And is the weather guess, similar but... in North Carolina? That is one of the warmer states. It's Eastern Seaboard, but it's quite warm, isn't it? It is warm, but it does get cool. And on a typical day, you can have like three different weather going right. on. Right. <laughs> yeah. New Zealand's a little bit like that, too. So tell me about Wake Up Sleeping Church. When did you decide that this needs to be a book? Tell me about the whole evolution of your book. Well, Wake Up Sleeping Church is actually my second book. And I okay. was not planning on writing a book. I was not planning on write, writing Wake Up Sleeping Church. And because I was in the transition of, you know, changing my job and it was just, wasn't something I was thinking about. And then before Christmas, I felt the urge to start writing. And Graham, I could not stop writing. I was going to work and I felt led. The Holy Spirit said, it's time to write your second book. It was a Friday. And I went to work that Friday and I just started to type. I could not stop typing. Then came home all i did was took a shower i went to bed after midnight that friday night the entire weekend i typed the entire book did the entire book over one weekend i could not stop writing and did you write it by hand or was it typed on the computer oh, typing. Typing. Oh, yeah yeah sure yeah, yeah i could not stop and i remember my husband it was sunday the sunday morning i was trying to make breakfast for my family, but my husband saw how distracted I was because I was running to the kitchen and to my you know, computer. He said, honey, let me do this. Go and finish your book. And I got the book finished by the weekend. Then got it. It was like two weeks or so before Christmas. At the end of the year, I got it, you know, proofread and everything. And then it was just birthed like that. It was just what was that? This Christmas just gone? 
this Christmas yes, we've just had? Yes, wow. Yes. So it's fresh. It's fresh, yes. And Wow. Even you know, I felt I feel as if it was all, you know, God's doing and what he wanted to get out before the new year. Because I did all of that. I went on Fiverr and I decided I wanted an audiobook. And I paid someone on Fiverr to do the audiobook. Then your audition came and I said, This is the man that has to do my <laughs> So I had I lost that money because the guy was like, Oh, respectfully, no, I'm not gonna give you a refund. <laughs> oh really? You didn't lose too much money on that deal, did you? Don't tell me how oh, much, no. I don't wanna know, but that's yeah. But, wow! Um, when I heard you, I was like, you know, God, I believe this is the man that you want to voice this, this book. It was so perfect. I was like, oh my goodness, is this for real? <laughs> it's a wonderful book, though. It was so much fun to Thank do, you. and it was, it was not what I was expecting when I got into it because it gets into some pretty heavy topics, doesn't it? Yes, and of course, you know it. Some people, it, it's going to rock the boat for some people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that is the intention in a good way. Hopefully, I can open people's eyes if they want to, you know, see yeah. the truth. But it's I very mean, I intense. Yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but in the book, you, you talk about lies that Christians have been taught by institutional churches. Do you want to just tell us what some of those lies are? You know, there's so many, but what, what upset me, because I gave my life, I came into the fold when I was in my 30s, so I was not indoctrinated. So I was working in corporate, working with, you know, managers, you, you, and you see, you know, millionaire, billionaires, and they're making money, they're not going to church. And they're, when I started church, the first thing they said, you have to pay a tithe. And then God will bless you with a job and you'll have money. I'm like, why are poor people in the church if this works? Is this the Ponzi scheme? I mean, I want a part of this. If I can give <laughs> if I can give ten percent of my salary and I'm and, and I'm gonna get it ten times, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but then it dawned on me like, why are poor people in the church? Why do these pastors have to be asking for money? Why aren't they billionaires by now? Yeah. Something must be wrong. And you know they told because it's people, not like God needs the money, <laughs> right? He literally gives it free, like you know, freely give. I mean, I'm sure that, and I understand, like you know, if you're running a church, you know, it takes money, cash to care. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but not ten percent of everybody's wages that's in there. That seems seems a lot. Yeah. Not only that, you know, you they tell the people you are cursed with a curse. Not, not just a curse, you know, you're cursed with a curse if you don't do that. And you're robbing God. How oh, can you rob God 10%? I mean, does it make sense? There are so many people that have lost. It is so sad. People have lost their homes, their families, just trying to give a 10% so that the God that saved them in the first place gave them the job so they can pay their bills. Yeah. You so know, do, it, do we actually need to have an organized religion? Or can you, can you go it alone and have a faith and a relationship with whatever God you believe in without the structure of organized religion? Well, for me, as I told you, I gave my life to the Lord when I was in my 30s. You know, I bought a house. I was blessed, got health and strength. And of course, I know people who were doing better than I was. I didn't have a relationship with God at the time. And since I told you, I came here 12 years, I've not joined the church. And God's been doing pretty good, <laughs> you know. So, and I'm working with people who are not even, they don't even profess to be Christian. Some people are atheists and they're doing better than me in terms of their finances. So, you know, people need to wake up and stop allowing charlatans and con artists, I call them, most of them, you know, to fleece them. But the Bible tells, of, tells us of these people that you know they were around before <laughs> and you know they're still here so a, a part of this is hoping to open people's eyes say hey god loves you he's not going to curse you yeah. and you know 
and of course you know i touch on the election um you 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 did the audio book so you know about it and yes if you look on amazon you see some of the <laughs> reviews people are mad oh i didn't but, look at that so for those who haven't checked out the book yet either the written book or the audio book you talk about the election of donald trump and um yeah. how um you weren't necessarily shall we say in favor of of this man having such an important position shall we say <laughs> i see and some people have got the book read or listened to that bit and then attacked you for it on in the comments Oh man, some people, but it, it's like a 50, 50, a lot of people like, you know, it's a good book. It's, it, it's like really fierce. It will get you. But if you have an open mind, you will realize that there are a lot of truths in it. Some people like, oh no, this lady is just bringing our own political views, but I'm not put my personal, everything that I put in there, they're factual, whatever happened, like, you know, the impeachment and they're all factual. And I'm obviously, I'm not against you know president trump or you know former president trump i'm just speaking the truth as the world saw it but yeah. some people are so blinded even when the truth is tearing them in their face they will not accept it and, and you also not, you, sorry you can say and i'm not even talking to like the people that are not in the church i'm talking to christians people who say that they are christians like yeah. they allow this person politics to drive them so far away from love <laughs> yeah 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 well he's in court again soon isn't he with a, a little matter yeah. of stormy daniels yeah, yeah he said um he, he posted that they should go on you know riot and you know protest because he according to him he was supposed to be you know going to jail tuesday gone so yeah but you know i yeah. that everything works out and um I'm not in it for the politics. I, as I said before, this all came downloaded and I wrote as the Holy Spirit led over the weekend. And this right, is what yeah. came forth. So. And this is what came out of you or through you or however it works. This is what happened. Yeah. But it's all you factual. If, yeah. If people you want to do the research. You also have a really interesting story early on in the book about a mm -hmm. neighbor of yours. Yeah. And that is uh that is almost well no it is it's it's what a lot of people might describe as supernatural in nature the way that that came down did that really happen was was that something that happened literally literally what happened yes but you and were told you 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 got the feeling or you got um a message that said this person is bad you yes, got that you know, for real yes you know we all do it we as humans you know it is so important for us to follow that intuition as human beings all of us you know have it but some of us sometimes ignore the feeling yeah but it, yeah. it was very you know it was strange for me because growing up you know, I, I, this is my second book. I wrote more supernatural stuff in my first book. But speaking on this one here, growing up, I've had, you know, some encounters and I've had experiences. So when I felt this way about my former neighbor, I knew right away not to ignore it. And it worked. Right. It turned out to be, you know, it turned out to be one of those weird experiences. <laughs> yeah, the book has got everything. It's... um. It's quite exciting. There's another big supernatural moment with is it a preacher or a pastor, and uh, and and you see you see them for who they truly are, which is yeah. much scarier than than what they are on the surface. Wow. And you know what is more scarier? I went and googled this person, and she built she she uh, she built some form of a church or somewhere, and she called it the ranch really yeah she called it the ranch <laughs> she has a place like a where she have people come and they pray and stuff she called it the ranch i was like oh my goodness i had yeah. a vision where it was ranch church yeah 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 you did wow mm -hmm. and and why is it in the book 
you use a word for God, and I've heard lots of words for God, obviously, Muhammad and Allah and Yahweh and Jehovah, but you used a word I'd not heard before, and maybe it's just because I'm ignorant, but you use the word Abba. Where does that come from? Well, Abba is, is I think, Hebrew for father. Right. And I, I consider my, my father, so, you know, growing up, I didn't have a father, and he's always been there for me. So I say, well, he's my Abba. <laughs> okay. So is that is that just your name, or is that a well-known name for for God? It is a well-known name. It okay. Is a well, but some Christians, some Christians choose to to you call him Abba, and that's why in my book I have a section where they're talking, calling men their spiritual father and calling their pastors daddy. I cannot fathom that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I cannot fathom daddy and papa and it to me it's I, I can't even understand it. I can't really? fathom calling that a human being calling him daddy. So because the Catholic Church have that with fathers, the priests are often called <laughs> father and, and um yes. yeah. Uh, a lot of Christian religions have that. Um yeah. but uh, but that's not that's not how you, you view it at all. <laughs> Yeah. It's just weird, especially when I saw in the Bible where it tells me, call no man father on this earth because you have one father and he's in heaven. I'm like, yeah. I don't need it. I mean, a, apart from your bio, biological father or somebody that is a father figure in your life, that's different. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the mind is that you are my spiritual father. How is it possible? I cannot fathom it. This person, I'm, because I've had vision where I stood before the heavenly father. And I felt his presence. I'm all the ear on my body stand still. My teeth. You know, when sometimes people teeth nudge, they weren't nudged. They felt as if they stood at attention. Everything in my being stood at attention. After after having experiences like that, hearing this voice of thunder and many water calling me and showing me things, I cannot look at a mere man. I respect people and I respect the offices. But I can't it would be blaspheme for me. That's how I felt. I'm scared. It would be blaspheme for me to look at a human being who I know will die and who will have sickness and, uh, and cannot do anything without the help of the spirits to call him a spiritual father. A helpless yeah. man. It's, it seems bizarre with the Catholic Church calling somebody <laughs> father who has taken a vow of celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's a, a whole different thing. Um, yeah. Well, it is a terrific book, and it's edgy. There's a little bit of politics in there. There's a little bit of supernatural in there, and there's a whole lot of Melinda in there. I tell you, it's a, it's a terrific book because it is your voice that I have to become telling the story. It's not like I'm a a third person narrator i'm i'm narrating it as you and so that was that was quite a responsibility uh, i'll tell you but well, I, uh i am so imp i'm i'm impressed i i'm still in awe because you took on the character you 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 spoke as if you were talking through me as if i was talking through you you know you did such an amazing job but it, Melinda, it was so well written, though. It was so nicely written in human terms. And I can see how you connect with people just by being you and now meeting you for the first time. I see that it's all real as well, you know? Um, yeah, it, it, it's cool. It's called Wake Up Sleeping Church. Is there a moral you'd like people to get from the book? Is there one message? We did talk about you know, charlatans and the rest of it. Is there one message? Because there there's quite a lot in there to unpack when yeah. you read it or listen to it. Is there one message that you hope people go away with after they read it or listen to it? The one message I would, you know, want people to go away with is that you are loved. You don't have to pay anybody for God to love you. You don't have to do anything extraordinary to be blessed. You are you are already blessed. You are already loved. The, the God of the universe, the, every, the uni, everything in the universe wants to help you succeed in this world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to worship a human being or give them 10%. Save your money. Save your money. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 
And so you tell me this is this is your second book. What's next for you? Is there a third one in the pipeline? I have no idea. I'm not thinking about it because I recently started a new job. I got promoted um, last week, started Monday. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn this new job. And because I feel wherever I go, I'm sent. So I believe I'm sent here. So I'm excited to see what Abba wants me to do here and what he's going to do. And if I'm writing my third book, I will definitely sh and positively call you, Graham. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you for letting me be your voice in this one. Melinda Dia Boyette. Uh, did I say that right? Yes, you did. Thank you so much for choosing me as your narrator. If you'd like to download the book, I'm going to put links in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll hook you straight up to Amazon. You'll be able to download the book. You'll be able to listen to it straight away. If you go there and go to the, where the listing is, you can hear samples of it, see if it's your cup of tea. But uh, just a terrific book. Melinda, thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, Graham, for having me. And thank you for being the narrator for my book. <laughs> it is awesome. <laughs>